Thanks, John. On BBC London, the Dartford crossing trips, which ended with bailiffs at the door. We hear from people who say they were harassed by private debt collectors. Good afternoon, I'm Alice Solfield. Our top story this lunchtime. A BBC London investigation has found private debt collection firms have been used to claim more than £100 million from people using the Dartford Crossing in the past five years. Drivers have told us they experienced intimidation and harassment over fines they believe were issued in error. National Highways, the government agency responsible for the bridge crossing, which connects Kent and Essex, says cases are only referred as a last resort. Our senior investigations reporter Charlotte Rose has been to meet some of those affected. This is the moment Rachel Canning found a bailiff at her front door at 8am while getting her son ready for school. He'd come to her home in East London over two unpaid Dartford crossings. No, I sent this through yesterday. She tells him she's appealing the fines because she had a dark charge account and wasn't told it had been suspended. The guy was quite abrupt, um, quite pushy, quite rude, um, made me very uncomfortable. It really upset my son. He was harassing me the whole time. Um, he was texting me, phoning me. In the end, she paid up in full and was later refunded when her appeal was successful. But Rachel is not alone. Since 2019, enforcement agencies contracted by Dart Charge have handled 2.3 million cases and collected almost £112 million in debt. Three main firms are currently used, CDER Group, Marston and Bristow and & Souter. In 2023, one in five people who received a fine later had their case passed on to debt collectors. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Andy Coote's ordeal with Dart Charge has gone on for over 10 months. He commutes from Kent to London for work, but like many was unaware his Dart Charge account had been suspended and he racked up 34 fines. He began to pay the penalties, but more kept arriving and some were passed to a debt collection firm. I got to a point where I couldn't function and I had to speak to my governor and said, I can't, I can't come into work today. At this point, he was told he owed almost £2,500. So it's actually very intimidating. In fact, I used to get um, texts, the first one normally being around about 6 o'clock in the morning, with, you have outstanding finances. 15 minutes later, you have outstanding finances. And you would get three or four of those per day. Rachel and Andy have now been refunded the money they paid to bailiffs, but they say no one from Dart Charge has ever apologised for the toll it took on them. Charlotte Rose, BBC London News. Well, National Highways said that in each of these cases, the person either did not have an active account when they made the crossing or the payment method on the account had not been updated, which is why penalties were issued. It said almost 95% of crossings are paid on time and without complication. CDER Group says once a case has been passed to them, they're unable to suspend enforcement action unless they receive payment or an instruction from the National Highways. It added it supports people with payment plans. The Mayor of London has put out a statement saying he thinks many Londoners will be anxious about the outcome of the US presidential election. He added they might feel fearful about what it will mean for democracy, women's rights and the impact on the international situation in the Middle East and Ukraine. Sadiq Khan has been a vocal critic of Donald Trump over the years, including on a recent trip to New York during the Labour Party conference. Responding to his comments, the leader of the Conservative group on the London Assembly, Neil Garrett, said it was important to recognise the legitimate winner of a free and fair election, and he accused Sadiq Khan of trying to use the American election as a ruse to distract from his own failures in office. NHS support staff at the Lister Hospital in Stevenage have walked out as part of a three-day strike over claims they've been shortchanged for years. The union Unison says clinical support workers at hospitals run by East and North Hertfordshire NHS Foundation Trust have been paid at a lower band than they should have. The trust said it's made a fair offer which has been accepted by a number of workers. 
a nightclub in Brentwood, which was made famous on the reality show The Only Way is Essex, is up for sale. The Sugar Hut opened in 2004 and has gone on the market for nearly £4 million. It was owned by one of the stars of the TV programme, Mick Norcross, before he died. Next, when he was born, Johnny Bayamungu's parents were told he wouldn't live. But now, at 20 years old, he's gone on to win a bronze medal in the Transplant Football World Cup. A rare condition that affects the abdominal muscles and can affect the kidneys, called prune belly syndrome, meant that after years of poor health, he needed a transplant, which he says transformed his life. It meant he was able to get back to playing football and was selected to represent England in this year's Transplant World Cup. Carl Mercer reports. Tag someone. Arms out. Arms out. Coach Johnny is very much in charge. Three, two, one, freeze. This is where the 20-year-old finds himself five days a week, teaching in the playgrounds at Marshgate Primary in Richmond, with a bunch of enthusiastic young ones. What are you doing, Sasha? It's also a place Johnny never expected to find himself, born with a rare condition called prune belly syndrome. When I was born, my parents got told that I wouldn't live. And then, obviously, I'm here today, but... So then it went to, after a year, he wouldn't live. After two years, he wouldn't live. He'd be lucky to make it past five. So... Yeah, I'm lucky to be here today. A kidney transplant three years ago changed his life and led earlier this year to Johnny being selected to play for England in the first transplant football World Cup in Italy. A dream for everyone, I think, is to represent their country, play football. But for, to finally do it, it's, it's amazing. It's a great opportunity. And what did you come away with? <laughs> we got third place in the end, got the classic England fashion, we got knocked out by Spain, but came third place. So. Not on penalties? No, not on penalties. We lost 2-1 in the final minutes. Hi, Jimmy, can I just give you... So that one is for one of the young adults and... Watching his progress back in London was Dr Emma Salisbury, who runs a young adult's kidney unit at Hammersmith Hospital. She's known him since before he had his transplant. Johnny is um, an amazing guy who... You know, he has always been like that. You know, that's thanks to his parents, thanks to who he is. But for me, he represents everything that I wish for for all our young adult patients. He has been dealt a rough deal in life, but he, and I'm sure there have been moments of doom and gloom. I know there have been. Um, I know there. Of course, how could you not feel sorry for yourself? But Johnny has just got up and taken every opportunity that has been given to him and run with it. And he's never let his kidney condition hold him back. Get ready. Three, two, one, go, 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 go. That second chance, one that Johnny is grabbing with both hands. Coaching in school and teaching were things I never thought I'd be able to do. But now being able to teach every day of the week and teach fabulous kids is amazing. Absolutely. That was Johnny Bayamungu. Now it's time for a look at the weather. Here's Katerina Christodoulou. Hello there, good afternoon to you. Well, the weather story is very similar again today. Mostly cloudy skies. That cloud may well be thick enough to produce one or two spots of drizzle. Apart from that, it should stay largely dry. And it's high pressure dominating, really keeping things settled and quiet today and over the coming days. You can see through the course of this afternoon, there is a lot of cloud around. Apart from one or two spots of drizzle, it should stay mostly dry with a gentle breeze. Temperatures above average, we're looking at at highs of around 13 degrees. So this evening and overnight, it stays largely dry for all areas. There'll be plenty of cloud lingering and we may get the occasional clear spell breaking through. So there is a chance of a few pockets of mist and fog again. Temperatures will fall away to around nine to 10 degrees. So a mild start to Thursday morning. Any mist and fog will gradually lift. We are gonna start off mostly cloudy and it looks like that cloud is gonna be quite stubborn through much of the day. Staying largely dry may brighten up occasionally and we're looking at highs tomorrow of around 14 degrees so temperatures remain above average for this time of the year and then similar again on friday mostly cloudy skies and it should stay dry 
That's all from BBC London. Now it's back to the rest of the BBC News at One with John Kay in Washington and Ben Brown in the studio. Bye-bye.